just days after 11 members of his congregation were murdered by a neo-Nazi gunman. Rabbi Jeffrey Myers was once again leading the Tree of Life congregation in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in Friday Sabbath services. Today, the synagogue hosted a prayer vigil to mark the time the massacre began one week ago. The services are acts of defiance in the face of the worst instance of anti-Semitic violence in U.S. history. Violence which has become tragically more frequent in recent years. Anti-Semitic hate crimes have seen a steady increase since 2015. According to the Anti-Defamation League, there were 1,986 reported anti-Semitic incidents in the United States in 2017, a 57% increase from 2016, which itself had seen a 35% uptick in incidents from the previous year. It's hard to separate those numbers from the increasingly rancorous tone of political discourse in this country and a president who has done little to distance himself from the hate mongering of the right's political fringe. So what can we do to stop the rising tide of hate in this country? Joining me now for more insight into this is author of the book, White American Youth, My Descent into America's Most Violent Hate Movement and How I Got Out. Founder of the Free Radicals Project and a reformed white supremacist, Christian Picciolini. Christian, um, at one time you had beliefs similar to those held by the man who attacked Pittsburgh's Tree of Life congregation. What infects someone uh, with that kind of hatred? How does that happen? You know, Essie, I, I, th I really think that the radicalization of people happens from the day that they're born. Uh, the ideology mm. is really just the final permission slip, uh, the driver's license, so to speak, mm. for them to go out and finally be able to act out on their frustrations or marginalization uh, or whatever else is broken inside of them. But I can mm. tell you that when somebody with power gives them words that back up what they believe, uh, spreads conspiracy theories and gives them some sort of agency, there's a certain subsegment of these extremist groups that will act. Now, most extremists, you know, may just be extremists vocally and in ideological terms, but there is also a group of people within every extremist movement who will take action based on the words that they hear. And now that hate is becoming normalized, they feel very empowered. So, I mean, specifically President Trump's words, is that motivating people in white supremacist circles? Do they care? what the President of the United States says or doesn't say? Well, I think the optics are that, uh, you know, they probably don't want to support somebody who's in government, but everything that he's saying uh, is in line with their policies, with their beliefs. And we see white supremacists like David Duke who openly support uh, Donald Trump's policies. So, right. you know, all I have to do is point to the people who are the white supremacists uh, to, to show you that they actually support uh, and believe what he yeah. says. I want you to listen to something that President Trump said uh, in the run-up to these midterms. Take a listen. You know, they have a word. It sort of became old-fashioned. It's called a nationalist. And I say, really, we're not supposed to use that word. You know what I am? I'm a nationalist, okay? I'm a nationalist. National. Nothing. Use that word. Use that word. What did you think when you heard that? I mean, it was uh, loud like a bullhorn to me. I didn't hear a dog whistle. Uh, and, and what I heard was his call to white nationalists saying that I'm behind you. And, and actually since then we've seen now four tragedies occur. Uh, we've had the pipe bombings. Uh, we've had the tragedy in Pittsburgh at the synagogue. Uh, in Louisville or in Kentucky, we saw two African-Americans killed by a white supremacist. And there are yeah. reports today that the shooting in Florida uh, was actually uh, committed by uh, somebody who was far right leaning with with white supremacist ideals, yeah. who's part of the involuntary celibate movement. So this is going to continue, right. uh, and and people need to be held accountable for their words. That last one was at a yoga a yoga studio in in Florida. We're still we're still reporting on that, um, trying to get to the bottom of what happened there. But it really does seem like there's been a significant uptick, not only in hate crime attacks that we know, but also just the mm. overt racism we've seen go viral lately. You know, uh, white people calling the police on minorities for living their lives, for having barbecues, going to stores. I, I did a story on a, a guy who was called for babysitting kids, um, just going to vote. What do you attribute all of that 
too. Surely that's been going on since before President Trump came into power. Absolutely. We've, you know, had a, an issue with white supremacy since our nation's founding. Uh, I think what's happening now is not only is there a resurgence and new people becoming involved in this movement, uh, but it's also emboldening the people who always had those beliefs to now be able to say them out loud. Uh, they're not hiding behind hoods anymore. They've gone from what I used to be wearing boots to now suits. Uh, yeah. And the conversation and the dialogue in our country has, has become so extreme that now these people who had hateful ideologies who were embarrassed of them maybe just a few years ago are not right. embarrassed to say them anymore. Right. So how do you reform people with this kind of hate filled in, in, their, in their hearts and minds? What do you do? You know, there are two things that, that haters love, and that's silence and violence. If we're silent, they grow, and if we're violent against them, they use that as a victim narrative. Uh, so what I do is I approach yeah. people with compassion and with cautious vulnerability, and I can tell you that for me, 23 years ago, the most powerful transformative thing was receiving compassion from the people I least deserved it from when wow. I least deserved it. So that's how I approach people who are in these groups, and I will introduce them to the people they think that they hate. It's really powerful, Christian. I'm really glad you joined me today to talk about this. Thank you, Essie.